Hey everybody, KMO here <laughs> with bad light. There, it's a little better. Uh, I thought I was being so clever. I've been pretty busy all day, but busy sitting down <laughs> at the computer or at the drawing tablet. And uh, by the time my my live stream, my three-hour daily live stream was done at 5 p.m., I had taken fewer than 700 steps in the whole day, or so says Huawei. So I thought, okay, well, it's only 6.30, I could, uh, I could walk to the grocery store. I'm out of salad greens, I need lemon juice. Uh, it wasn't need that brought me here, except, you know, need for steps. I get here, and the place is closed. But they're pretty Christmas displays. So it goes. So now, you know, I will have taken the requisite number of steps, but acquired <laughs> no provisions in the process. So it goes. Uh, when I get back, maybe I'll have a look at an article that somebody sent me about why the Bitcoin price is so high. What's your personal theory? More to come. Hey everybody, KMO here, and I'm back from my walk. And uh, this, this is what I drew yesterday and today on the, uh, the daily live stream. That's Darth Talon. Darth Talon is a hot chick. I will be putting Darth Talon in the uh, the thumbnail for this video, and I'm also going to put uh, her name and Bitcoin in the title of this video. Clickbait. All right, so Jeff, Sea Realm listener Jeff with a G, uh, sent me an article about Bitcoin, five reasons why it's going up. And this is from a website called The Reformed Broker. Now, five of these reasons are kind of, from my perspective, kind of nebulous. They include the fact that, you know, it's going up. When it goes up, people pay attention. They don't want to miss out. They jump on. So upward momentum with Bitcoin, uh, you know, it's it's got a certain life of its own. As the author says, the more something moves in a given direction, the more people believe it will continue to go in that direction until a breaking point is reached and a correction shakes things up a bit. Happens fairly regularly with Bitcoin. I won't say often, but regularly. It's cyclical. The second, the second reason is the most interesting of the bunch from my perspective, because the other four, I mean, they're just kind of always in the background. But this one, uh, the, the author argues that the author reports that Bitcoin, that uh, both PayPal and uh, the Square Cash app are both trying to buy up Bitcoin right now so that they can have enough on hand to allow their users to transact in Bitcoin just effortlessly, seamlessly. Which, you know, that's great. That's, that's, that's what takes Bitcoin from being just this speculative vehicle that uh, rewards people who are tech savvy and early to being an actual useful currency that people who don't know anything about tech can use. And the, authors, you know, the author gives the example of, I don't know how to take my car engine apart, but I know how to drive my kid to school. Bitcoin's not there yet. You, you have to know shit, you know, to use Bitcoin these days. It's not true of the dollar. So, you know, until Bitcoin gets over that usability hurdle, it's kind of a novelty. You know, it's not really a functional alternative to fiat currency. So that was the most interesting thing to me. The rest are, well, just plain old FOMO. You know, people don't want to miss out, <laughs> particularly on Wall Street. Uh, another, another reason is that, you know, beyond PayPal and uh, the Square Cash app, other types of financial services, like, you know, your bank or your investment funds or your retirement funds or, you know, all, all kinds of different financial instruments are starting to become uh, integrated with Bitcoin. So just this widespread integration with other financial instruments makes people more interested in it. And, you know, its value rises. And then there's gold and silver. The dollar is falling. Bitcoin's going up. Copper is going up. I mean, all manner of, um, you know, alternatives to holding your wealth in dollars are increasing in value faster than gold and silver are. You know, gold and silver are just not performing that well. And people look over to Bitcoin and they hear that, oh, yeah, you know, Bitcoin is the gold for young people. And they say, well, if FOMO kicks in. I got to get on that, you know. So the various types of FOMO listed here and the... Um, the fact that gold and silver aren't doing that great at a time when you'd think they would be going gangbusters. These are all, from my perspective, not particularly convincing, but the whole uh, sort of race to buy up as much by uh, PayPal and the Square Cash app 
That to me, I didn't know, and that seems to have a lot of explanatory value. So there you have it. <laughs> Five reasons why Bitcoin is going up. Now, are they the real reasons or are these uh, post hoc rationalizations? Well, I expect mostly the latter because, you know, the real world is complicated. <laughs> we don't know why stuff happens, mostly. All right. Talk to you all later. That's two. Only 98 to go. <laughs>